we're able to say to our loved one, darling, I am here for you. And that is a statement of fact. You have established your present presence in the here and the now, and you're able to say to this person, I'm here for you. And it's a wonderful thing to be able to say. And the other person will feel very moved that you're able to say that with such gravitas, you know, I really am here for you. Not a bland, throwaway comment. And you can say, look at them and say, and I know you're there because you really see their presence in the here and the now. And it makes me very happy that you're there. I know you're there, and that makes me very happy. You're there in my life. Thank you for being there. That's a, a way of saying I love you. So, to do that, But it's um, as much as we can. But we get busy in our life and we have stresses and sometimes we have miscommunications and difficult perceptions between ourselves and our relationships and we don't feel so much so easy to, to do this. And much as we'd like to, in principle in theory. In practice, we find ourselves distracting ourselves and um, not taking this time and feel a lot of pressure on ourselves to, to do more, uh, to be more efficient, to fit in more things and um, to excel more, to do better. And we put ourselves under pressure but we're also, there's a lot of expectations on us. And it gets a bit too much. We can get overwhelmed. Sometimes we have maybe get to the point of a breakdown. But before that happens, we can already experience something we call stress. And even students, uh, I think, sometimes get this. You know, maybe young and free in uh, their mind and at heart, but they can also get this stress, and maybe even more so. They don't have the, the tools to be able to restore their freshness and just take time to stop and say, hang on a sec, I can actually rest for a moment here. How we do that, I've explained with this just stopping and breathing, is that if we're in a situation where we feel that we uh, it's too difficult to just stop physically and do these things, what are the moments in the day where we can practice without having to take special time out. One example could be the red light of the traffic. When you have to stop for a red light, take that time to go back to your breath. Another example could be brushing your teeth. When you brush your teeth, you know you have to take some time to do that. The, if you want to brush your teeth well, you don't want to rush it. So try to have an attitude while you're brushing, brushing your teeth of relaxing and being present and being aware I'm brushing my teeth. Another example is if you don't have a dishwasher yet and you still do the washing up by hand or even if you just occasionally do washing up by hand, as we do in Plum Village, <coughs> while you're washing the pots or washing your dishes, stand in such a way that feels solid. I'm, I'm really here and I'm stable. Relax your shoulders and really feel that you're giving all of your attention to washing the dishes and notice what's happening uh, in your mind, how you're feeling, and try to say to yourself, okay, I give my full attention to washing the dishes. I did this one time, I was living on my own uh, in London for a 
period. And I remember I was um, had the radio on and I was washing the dishes. We often want that kind of company, you know, you have the radio on or even the TV on in the background. It's kind of company in the background while we're doing things. And I was uh, keen to establish this practice of mindfulness in my life that I've been very inspired to read about. And um, I really wanted to do it, so I thought, here I am, listening to the radio and washing up. Why don't I switch the radio off? Switch the radio off, go back to the dishes and invest it in them. And I remember that particular time I got in touch with a feeling of loneliness in me. I really didn't like, I felt lonely to be just on my own in this flat, uh, washing these dishes. And it was an uncomfortable feeling. But I invested myself in washing the dishes and breathing. I even remember stopping while I was washing the dishes, put the dishes down and just closed my eyes and took care of this difficult feeling of loneliness. And I had to breathe maybe a minute or two to feel that I'd taken care of this feeling, breathing uh, compassion into this area of pain. It wasn't a very strong pain, but it was enough, certainly enough to make me want to have the radio on and want to phone people up and distract myself. And I was able to stop and take care and then go back to the washing up. And it was one of the most precious uh, experiences for me to realize that I, there was another way that I could do that. And after that, the feeling that would drive me to want to distract myself was gone. And I had this sense of being comfortable with myself, in myself. And I suddenly had this freedom of choice. Now what do I want to do? And it didn't feel like I was being driven. And I enjoyed an evening on my own. Perhaps normally I would have found some reason I must bring this person or I must and distract myself. And um, so that would be one example. Often we put the radio on in the car uh, for the similar kind of reason. And if we can switch the radio off and drive with the silence, and just to be with ourselves while we're driving, and as I say, stop at the red lights. Uh, we can make, we can sometimes get in touch with this feeling that's making us a bit uncomfortable, and go through it. And we then come, it's like we come through to the other side, and we feel very liberated by that. So, that's, uh, sharing a personal experience of putting um, the practice into practice. So this practice of mindfulness, of breathing, <coughs> can be, as I've described, used to take care of difficult emotions. And sometimes we have a very strong emotion. And we know that many people, many young people, um, can die because of strong emotions, because they don't know how to handle them, they may commit suicide. And of course, it's, that's the extreme. But people do become frightened of their strong emotions. And I feel that at whatever age, right from very young, it's such a, a shame that we don't teach our children and our young people very something very simple about how to handle emotions because our emotions are so much part of our human experience. We should not be pushed around by them or fear them. We should rather just learn about how to handle them and know how to calm our emotions down, know how to go through them in a way where we don't, too much damage is not done. We all know uh, sometimes if we get angry, it's a strong emotion. And it has the function of projecting that. I'm angry at you. You're the cause of my anger. 